Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Snapfingers TV. I'm Poppy. Today our guest is Oliver, the founder of InsureAce Protocol. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Poppy. Hello, everyone. InsureAce is a multi-chain decentralized insurance protocol aiming to provide reliable, robust, and secure insurance services to DeFi users with sustainable return. Now let's get it started. Hello, Oliver. Could you please introduce a little bit about yourself? How you came across crypto and kicked off insurance protocol? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. Uh, it's really been a pleasure to come to Snap Fingers. Yeah, I know you guys are running a great, great podcast. So um, my name is Oliver. I'm the founder of uh, Insurance Protocol, a DeFi insurance uh, project. So I came into crypto space back to 2017, uh, where I worked as a CTO in one of the three uh, largest regulated exchanges in Singapore. I need a team, you know, doing crypto research and blockchain technology development there and gradually uh, get more into the uh, crypto space. And last year when we saw the DeFi summer rise and we also seen a lot of hacks happening in the DeFi space. And from there onwards, we were starting to think if we can do something, you know, to safeguard the whole DeFi space. That's where we uh, started this project. Yeah, so we, started this project from September last year. So up to now, it has been like around six to seven months. So overall, um, I think this project has been, you know, uh, keep developing and we're getting more and more uh, traction. Our mission is to make DeFi a safer place. Yeah, right. Yeah, you are in dirty background. So you change from TradeFi to DeFi area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Next question is about what are the unique advantages of insurance protocol? How does it differentiate itself from other DeFi insurance protocols such as Nexus Neutral and uh, Color? Yeah, sure. I think that is a uh, great question because Nexus Mutual has been the leading player in the DeFi insurance sector. And I think they started pretty much back to 2018 and they took up uh, in the DeFi summer. So for us, we are a late comer, but we definitely have our unique uh, venue propositions here. Like uh, just to name a few, like in terms of the product accessibility, we do not have KYC and we are providing multi-chain support. So which I think it's, um, um, much more accessible than access mutual to the users. And in terms of the affordability, we believe that DeFi insurance should be affordable to everyone so that you know we can we can cover the broadest um, risk in DeFi. So based on the unique portfolio based coverage uh, we can provide. So we're offering one of the lowest uh, premium in the market. So that makes it you know much uh, affordable to every DeFi user. I think the third one is about profit profitability. I think everyone comes to DeFi will uh, look at the APY, look at how much they can earn. So for us, although we are a DeFi insurance protocol, we also provide sustainable return from the premium we earn, also from the investment returns. So pretty much we are are providing a sustainable and comparable you know uh apy to the DeFi users yeah yeah great i think yeah your your protocol is mainly focused on like the normal individuals and uh, yeah the out of crypto users the cost uh, is very uh, efficient cost and uh, because you don't have kyc so maybe it's more user friendly yes exactly i think many people actually uh you know, underestimate the importance of low KYC. So I've been talking to uh, yeah. like a few people in some of the, you know, areas in the world, like Africa, India, and some other places in the, in the Middle East. So, you know, um, because there is uh, KYC for some of the existing products. So people in those areas are able to, are unable to use our product. So actually KYC is a big hurdle for, you know, for DeFi accessibility, I would say. Yeah, but we do not need KYC. So, you know, in a sense we're providing much wider accessibility to everyone who comes to DeFi. Yeah, DeFi is permissionless. That's his yes. great term. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, now we know the crypto ecosystem have a lot of diversity. Yeah, it's not only Ethereum. We can also see BSC, Polkadot, Solana are doing well. Yeah, what's insurance next move on um, cross chain? Because you just mentioned that yeah, you have you are a, cro a cross chain protocol, right? April, you are launched on um, Ethereum. Ethereum and uh, now BSC. And what's yeah. next? 
Um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, multi-chain insurance is um, was part of the plan in our original web paper. So we are, you know, sticking to to our our roadmap on the multi-chain side as well. So I think in the past few few months, uh, everyone in DeFi has seen the great power of uh, of you know uh, cross-chain applications. So for us to provide uh, multi-chain insurance is one of our mission to go. So uh, we back to April, we, we deployed our D app to Ethereum mainnet. And in uh, middle of, of May, we provide our uh, multi-insurance 1.0. And in um, in late June, we deployed to BSC, so which is our multi-chain protocol way 2.0. So for our uh, multi-chain insurance way 1.0, we are providing you know uh, coverages to the protocols on other you know um, DeFi uh, and public chains like Solana, Phantom, Polygon, and Heckle and BSC. But we are still relying on our deployment on Ethereum. But in our second version of multi-chain, we have deployed to, to BSC and we're also uh, developing to Polygon, Phantom, Solana, and a variety of uh, other chains. So in the future, our aim is that people can access our service from any chain, you know, to cover any asset uh, on, on any other chain. So in a way, we're providing a universal uh, accessibility for people to access the multi-chain world. That's pretty much um, our target and you know roadmap for the uh, multi-chain insurance. Yeah, good to, to hear. Very looking forward to your deploy on Polygon and Phantom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that will come uh, very, very soon. Yeah, and we are very close to get uh, the Sonana grant. So I think Sonana uh, recently, uh, Sonana, you know, ecosystem is starting to, to boom in. So we'll definitely be there as well. Yeah, because Solana is uh, the best ecosystem for business application, right? Yeah, exactly. I think Solana really has a lot of you know potential to unlock. So as an insurance protocol, I think many people may have not realized the, the importance of uh, the role that insurance protocol is playing in each you know public chain ecosystem. So for uh, for every ecosystem, uh, definitely you have you have those infrastructure layers like uh, infra, alchemix, and also you will have lending, borrowing, DAX. At the same time, if you have insurance protocol, it will provide the kind of you know security, uh, you know, uh, protection to the to the uh, applications on those different uh, ecosystem ecosystems. So I think DeFi insurance is um, very important to to one of, to to every one of those you know public chains. Yeah, I agree. Uh, because yeah, insurance is a very essential infrastructure for DeFi. DeFi is growing. I think yeah, insurance sector, insurance area has big potential. Yeah. yeah, exactly. From the product aspect, could you talk a little bit about uh, how your insurance pricing is done? Since it is a key question for insurance products, it is a staking based model like other insurance protocols. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think pricing is definitely, you know, is at the core of uh, insurance business. So basically, insurance is about how you price risk, how you um, how you cover the risk and, you know, how you you know handle the claim payouts when the uh, insurance policy is triggered. So for us, um, we are building more of an actual science based uh, models, not like uh, I know there are some other protocols who are using staking based model. So basically, the more staking there is, uh, for 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 a particular you know uh, protocol, the lower the premiums are. But we think that's uh, not right because let's say for some of the protocols, uh, if there is just too NATO of staking, then the premium could be very high. So which is not affordable to those you know users who want to be get covered. But for us, we're using an actual science-based uh, methodology. So we will run a risk assessment first, you know, give a risk risk rating to the protocol, and after that we will decide on a, on a uh, basic premium level. So that's how we price the uh, cost for each individual uh, each, each individual protocol. Uh, at the same time, since we are providing a portfolio-based coverage, so uh, upon the the uh, unit cost for each individual protocol, we are also calculating the correlations between uh, between those different protocols. And on top of that, we can provide the portfolio-based uh, coverage. So that's very much how we do the um, do the pricing. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, next question. Yeah, recently there was a hack spray on BSC. To prevent this, projects can basically get audits by insurance and even post up bank bounties. In such cases, why is insurance 
they are needed. As a project team, how can I get listed on insure aids for coverage? So I think I've been asked many times on this question. So let's say uh, normally project teams will, will get audited, they will have bug bounty programs, they will have in-house engineering teams. So then why do they still need to get covered? Why is insurance still necessary, right? So people say, hey, we have got so much efforts, right? So why do I st still need to spend some extra money to get covered? So then uh, my answer would be, when we are working on DeFi projects, like we are working on anything else, we always work for the best, but at the same time, we prepare for the worst. Yeah. So the bug bounties, the auditings, you know, everything you're doing is, is mostly work for the best. But when the worst happens, only insurance is there, you know, to, to cover your loss. Because let's say most of the time, I think currently auditing firms does not take any, you know, uh, obligations um, after auditing. Many protocols still got hacked, even if they got multiple audits, right? But auditing firms, you know, will not take any responsibility up there. But let's say if you buy insurance um, and you got hacked, we will come in, you know, to give you the real compensation with hard code cash. So, mm. in a way, we're the one, you know, really coming, you know, to um, to help you undertake the loss. Yeah. So that's why I think insurance is uh, very important uh, for for the whole DeFi ecosystem. I think it's very necessary for some DeFi DeFi products to have insurance to be back to be support. Yeah. At least when your farming get hacked. Yeah, at least you can get some compensation. Also, I think you ask about as a project team, how can I get this on insurance? Mm -hmm. So basically, it's very simple. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, www.insurance.io, you will find there is a um, there is a button there, get listed. So you can just fill in a form with uh, with first questions to provide information on your security status. After that, we will run our in-house uh, risk assessment and we will contact you and, and uh, get you listed. So it's pretty much simple, but uh, it may just take some time for you to fill up the, you know, the questionnaire. So uh, we are collecting information uh, mostly on the security side to, to run a very thorough risk assessment on the protocol itself. For our audiences are project founders. Yeah, you have to hear this and uh, go to apply, get listed on insurance. DeFi insurance is a very professional area. Also, DeFi is in very early infancy period. What do you think about the future of DeFi insurance and what are the current challenges? I think um, as long as DeFi is still developing and expanding, I think insurance will play a key part there. So I think for the uh, next step of uh, DeFi insurance, there will be you know some uh, key aspects uh, to further develop. The first one is about, I think about uh, product availability. So in a way, we need to provide more products to cover more risks and cover more uh, public chains so that people can cover any any asset from any set, uh, you know any corner of the of the blockchain world second one i think it's a, about affordability so we need to lower down the cost you know provide broader coverage and so that everyone every defi user is able to purchase a cover and third one i think is about sustainability so i think uh, you you have seen you know a lot of defi protocols they they, they rise and they go down very quickly, right? There are rug pulls, you know, some of them get hacked and some of them provide, you know, crazy APYs at, at the first few days and gradually, you know, they just, uh, their business model cannot, you know, uh, be sustainable. So for us, I think uh, sustainability is also very important. So at insurers, we have a business model that we can sell out more covers and we'll, at the same time, we're also sharing, you know, the premiums back to the stakeholders in the whole ecosystem and also we are building the investment arm which is, is going to generate sustainable returns to the token holders as well so in a way i think sustainability is very important as well yeah so i think that would be the you know some of the key things that DeFi insurance protocol need to think about and you know continue to build right 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 i think uh, availability affordability is like the essential parameters that mm -hmm. every insurance protocols need to achieve. But sustainability, yeah, is the most important one because, you know, yeah, you have to attract users to use your insurance protocol because it defines very early and its composability or also attracting a lot of risks. So I think in this area, if you can dive in and do 
some really good, good uh, improvements. Your protocols will be have the high compatibility. Yeah, exactly. Finally, could you share with us what's your roadmap in 2020? And uh, also give us a little bit of a sneak peek here to what's coming next. Yeah, sure. Currently, I think the market is running a bit of a sideways. There are a lot of uncertainties, you know, in the market. But for us, we're just keep our heads down and keep on building the project. So there are a few things we are, are continue to develop, you know, to improve our our project, like the B two B insurance. So I think B two B insurance is very important, which is uh, another big direction uh, we're developing. So apart from the 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 general uh, DeFi users, I think DeFi project teams are are another you know groups that need coverage as well especially for some of the new uh you know DeFi projects on the one hand they want to you know quick to market uh, seize the market opportunities on the other hand so apart from, as i mentioned you know just earlier apart from the auditing bug bounties uh, you can always think about getting an insurance from us and which will safeguard your uh your product safeguard your project so that's about b2b insurance uh second one is about uh, we're building apis to integrate with more or DeFi projects, we actually call it insurance as a service. So um, in the future, I think every DeFi protocol or you know many of the DeFi protocols, uh, they, they will you know use our service, integrate our service into their business process. So that anytime you know people want to buy insurance, it can just, you know, maybe it's just a click away. So just like when you're buying a flight ticket, right? There will always be a, an option there. Hey, you want to buy a flight delay ticket, uh, uh, insurance there. So many people just take it without you noticing it. So that's what, what we think insurance would be a necessary, you know, a very essential service uh, applicable to every DeFi, you know, uh, protocol. So the API, which is help, help us to expand you know, the network. And also the third one is about the investment arm, uh, which I've mentioned to, cr to create sustainable returns to the stakeholders in this whole um, ecosystem. Of course, the, the last part is about uh, margin expansion. So as I mentioned earlier, we have been deployed to Ethereum and BSA, and we're also deploying to Polygon, Solana, and uh, like a few other uh, different public chains as well. So our aim is definitely to make people accessible to our service from any chain uh, in the uh, blockchain space. You know, they are they can reach our service and get their assets uh, covered. So pretty much, uh, we're just working hard, you know, to continuously bring values to our token holders, to our uh, community, and also to our users. Great. Yeah, we are look forward to. Before our, we conclude our conversation, do you have any aspect you want to add on to our audience? I think I have been watching, you know, almost every episode of uh, Snap Fingers uh, TV. So I think it's a great, uh, great program. And I think uh, with, uh, you know, the, the great programs, Next Step Fingers, it actually functions very important in a way to expand the whole DeFi network, to make everybody aware of how DeFi works, aware of some of the you know good product uh, projects in the DeFi space uh, thanks for the great podcast uh, Snap fingers have been making and hope to you know uh, hope we can get more collaborations in the future yeah great very nice to hear that and it's also very pleasure to talk to you and thank you so much for coming on Snap fingers tv thank you yeah thanks for having me here i think the pleasure is mine and look forward you know to working together more in the future